with that. I was in a band with him in the sixth grade. He worked for Sci-Fi. What was your band's name? Uh, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> that was the name. All right. <laughs> By the way, you gotta hit me up with names. I wanted to know. Names. I figured you guys uh, had a good one. No, we had no fucking name. We were lip syncing, <laughs> singing the Beatles over fucking music with the Jackson Five, like four fucking <clears throat> momos. But my point being, he said that he kept watching his kids watching TV. And it was completely different. They watched television a different way. They watched it on demand or something. And he went to sci-fi and kept telling them things are changing. And sci-fi was like, nah, we're going to keep doing it. So he quit and he fucking started this YouTube channel for horror people. And he's doing great with it. $7 a month, unlimited horror. He gets it from all over the world. He's been a horror buff since we were growing up. That was his thing. He went to the movies in Jersey City. And he'd tell you, and you're like, Jesus. But he was such a nice guy, and he had such a passion for what he did. And now he's making a living from just because he saw the future. So uh, even as a comic, I'm very fortunate. You are, too, that we're part of the podcast. Thing. Oh, I look absolutely. at a lot of comics still and go, you don't have a podcast, and you're not part of one. You know, right now you're suspect. Even if your podcast sucks, you're suspect because you don't have one. People are like, why wouldn't you have a fucking podcast? Everybody has a podcast, or at least is trying to put one together, or is a part of one, or calls one in. If you're a comedian, I'm not talking about if you're, you know, a stockbroker working 12 hour days busting your ass, while well, fucking <laughs> assholes like me are making people laugh. You guys work for real. You got no fucking time. It's just crazy how, like, how much. Competition, this for like how much they like have to know now. Like I was, when I was talking to their to the parents, I was, I, I brought up Cassius Morris and how he's been doing it since he was ten, and like part of what I was doing up there was tr- training like the thirteen year old girls to run the board and do everything they were doing, and it's just it's and they're already animating stuff, and it's just crazy how much stuff there is for that for them now, and then and how great like if if you started a podcast, like you said, you met somebody this weekend who's been following you for fifteen years. If there's a comedian now who's 16 or 18 and starts a podcast by the time he gets to be 30 he'll definitely have people who were there from the beginning how fucking crazy is that i i got a call from roger paul maybe 16 years ago roger paul's a fucking kinky guy and whenever the phone rings there's always gonna be a by the way <clears throat> so they want to hire you in milwaukee <clears throat> i had worked with a guy on a yoda run <laughs> wait Okay. What's I, a Yoda run? Yoda, Yoda is a guy out of Michigan. Oh, Yoda. And, okay. And 10 years ago, the father, old man Yoda, 15, 20 years ago, if you're a comic and you were from the Midwest, it was them and somebody else. But Yoda controlled the Midwest. Whether you were dirty or clean, if he liked you, you covered your nut. He had 63 rooms and 22 weeks. Like all those cities in Michigan, there was a comedy club that he booked. That's it. And they were all, some were B rooms, some were fucking D rooms, some were A rooms. Uh, And he had Buffalo, he had Cleveland. I mean, he had so many rooms. So I did a Yoda run, and I met this dude from Milwaukee. And I said, what do I got to do to get into that room in Milwaukee? And he goes, I recommend you. And three months later, some guy calls me and says, hey, they're looking for you to see if you want to work that room. So I went up there in the dead of the winter, uh, February, Valentine's Day weekend, like that that weekend. Oh, my God. The fuck. The, by the way, was the condo. It looked like the Munsters. I mean, from the front. It even had the gate and shit, the whole the fucking gate. deal, everything. Oh, my God. I've talked about this. It was just horrific. But anyway, uh <laughs> When I was up there that time, I met the lady who actually books that. And she used to book that room at the time in Appleton. She's still around. Her daughter's now a booker in that area. Very small venues, you know, colleges, shit like that. So when she offered me the week, she said, if you come in Tuesday, I I got a a show I do at Marquette. You could do the show. 125 bucks. One of those deals, you know. So I went and did the show, and in those days, all I did was snort blow and hang out at the store. That's it. So my whole comedy routine was about fiending and looking out windows, and you know, and he, nobody was laughing. But I, I, I no, I don't remember. I do not remember. 
I don't even listen sometimes. I can't even hear whether people laugh or not. I knew it wasn't my audience. But now, this weekend in Minneapolis, some kid pulls me aside from the night, Friday night early show and says that he was there that night and he came to uh, the comedy club that weekend to saw, see me and he remembered the girl with the red hair. And it was just really nice that he was like, I made a mental note. I always knew you would do something. It was very nice. That know? is nice. You don't bump into people like that. No. Anymore. I made a mental note of you a, a, a while ago. I mean, you I, you know, I've known you, but I, you know, I've always sort of kept to myself. Uh, we've done several shows together, but there was one we did <laughs> the Hollywood Improv years ago. And a girl went up, and she was pretty dirty, and you followed her. And you got up, and you said, uh, that's the type of chick at all. Let your fucker in the ass pull it out and suck it. And then the crowd went nuts and you laughed. And But that was your way of saying, like, I loved her. You know, that's what you said after. Like, I loved her. I loved her. Dude, I laughed so fucking hard at that for like five goddamn minutes because it's probably 100% true. So funny. Oh, my God. That was your just walk up and say it off the top of your head. And it was so it No, was sometimes so you perfect. gotta break a room up. It <laughs> was perfect. <laughs> Listen, every, unless you're fucked up. You always, if you're, you come, if you have that little sarcasm gene, there's things people say that no matter what age they say it, something comes to your mind and you want to crack a joke. Whether it's to yourself, whether it's to the room, whatever the fuck it is, you know. Uh, <clears throat> today the baby was looking at me, she kept looking at me going, blow daddy. <laughs> blow and I'm like in 20 years you won't be saying you know, <laughs> like you think of things like that yeah. you, you know a hot girl goes up on a stage her tits are out she's talking about getting fucked in the ass you're sitting there you're a man even if you're on a date what are you thinking about fucking her in the ass and sticking your dick in her mouth all I'm doing is going on stage and saying what you're thinking that's what, that's the what reason why I got to laugh was because this is as I walked out this was what everybody was fucking thinking Everybody was fucking thinking, oh, my God. Yeah, who knows? I, I hate when comics go up with the set routine. Sometimes you have to react to the fucking room. Yeah, I agree with you that. You have to 100%. react to the you room as a comedy. To there's comedy. There's natural comedy in the room. Nothing bothers me more when I see something coming. There's always, even in just regular conversation sometimes, there's a great comedic banter in a conversation, an energy that... Somebody else not, might not be laughing, but you might. You ever feel that? Oh, you ever yeah. Feel that All the time. A little comedy, <clears throat> light banter that you're like, oh, my God, that's so, that thing in a movie was such a brilliant conversation mm -hmm. they had. You know, it was so, as people say. That's the stuff that makes me laugh most that you say now. Because I'll come and see shows a lot, <clears throat> so I'll, I'll get to know some bits. But the stuff that makes me laugh is the stuff that you just say that you'll never say again. Yeah, that's the, th those are my favorite people in the world. Like, my grandmother and her sisters were the same way. I couldn't wait to hear what, like, you know, we've all been through situations, but I couldn't wait to hear their response to that situation. You know what I mean? Much like what he's saying with you, like, you want to hear what you're going to say next. People really enjoy, uh, you know, the whatever it is behind it. Uh, the, the sarcasm, the smart-assness, the, 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 the funny uh, the clever, you know, because the other thing, too, is as comedians, we say what people are thinking, but we I think it's our job to say that same thing in a way they've never thought of saying that. We're going in like fucking Marines, you understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.